Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More. It's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to introduce you the, to the FM operator, frequency modulation operator inside Nambu. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So I mean, I'm not inside AUM this side, so I'm not using Nambu inside a host, but I'm using it as a standalone application. But it is exactly the same as you would see it in terms of functionality inside an uh, host. But in this case, it gives me a little bit more space in terms of recording and show you what I'm doing. So let's start with going to initialize and, and press a new so that we have an initialized preset. So let's ensure we are on operator A and let's adjust a little bit the start time and the release time. Nice. Okay, let's go to operator B now. And let's copy, you should know this from the previous tutorial, the envelope from operator A to operator B. Now, we have operator A as an output, as the metric suggests. So let's start with that and let's go through the parameter of the FM operator. So um, the FM operator changes or modulate frequency of the operator which has this operator as an input. That is why it becomes important the input and output for each of the operator. But let's go through uh, the uh, first the settings of the FM operator. So first of all, you have a selection of the waveform. The default one is sung, but you can change um, to other ones more than 30s. <laughs> Really nice, and you can scroll. As I said, uh, there are lots available. So let's set the default one, which is a sine wave. Next, we have width, the width of the waveform. And you can modulate it, of course. So let's try it. Let's click on modulation and assign maximum the LFO one. And of course, you can change the rate here, as well the level down here. Okay, let's reset these to maximum and let's remove the LFO one for modulation. Next, we have bending. See what it does. If I turn it to the left, you have the top left part, which has got the narrower or it's been compressed while the bottom right, the opposite is being expanded. And of course it will be the opposite as I move to positive values like so. So of course you can put it to the middle and you can add an LFO as well. And let's try and see what happens. <laughs> Interesting sound. Right, so let's remove that LFO. Next, you can invert the phase of the waveform. So you can see it start positive. So if I click invert, it will start on the negative part of the waveform. Well, let's set that as the default. Next, we have feedback. So practically, um, you have the output of the operator, which is uh, going back as an input. Okay, that is the feedback inside the, the operator itself. So let's see how that works. Be careful because after a, a certain level, you can go into introduce artifacts that you may not want. And of course, you can act on a modulation there as well. And again, be careful in terms of the level, which I will show you here. After a certain level, you start to introduce artifacts because it will set the either to the maximum or of the positive or negative value of the feedback. So, but that is an important parameter in FM synthesis, the feedback to itself. Next, we have the section on the pitch. You can have the pitch set to ratio, which in this case is one, which means that you hear the note as uh, you press it on the keyboard. But you can have it twice the pitch of what you press on the keyboard. And so on. Or you can set it as fixed. And in this case, you just hear not much because the frequency is only 9 hertz. But if I increase it, and this is useful to have a constant pitch as you are, for example, creating more complex um, uh, metric setup as you're using FM synthesis. But for now, let's set it to ratio and to 1. Next, you can also adjust, uh, again, the pitch in fine mode, which goes up to 
double or alf of the pitch itself. Double click, of course, goes back to the default. And next, you have a diode for detuning. Really nice. You have a switch here for the vibrato. At the moment, it is on, which means that if I act here on this diode, where it says vibrato, you start to hear the vibrato. If I click on it, you don't hear any more the vibrato. Similar, you have a pitch envelope, okay, which is active at the moment. The, the pitch envelope is here, so let's uh, set it to maximum. You hear the pitches going down. So if you click on this button, it will show you the waveform. So here you see a decay, which is going uh, down. And here you have your attack, decay, and release for time and level, of course. And um, uh, you have time for decay, time and level for release. And you can adjust also the curvature as well. Here you have the amount. Of course, let me show you something. If I say I increase the level like so, so after the decay will go up as a level on the release. Okay, so that means that if I was to increase the release here on the amplitude, if I press on the key now, it will drop as a pitch. And when I release the key, it will go up. So it's going up, really interesting. Okay, and um, of course you can disable this. So you don't hear it anymore. But if it is, um, you you can also have, have it by velocity as well. Let's set these uh, as uh, a velocity, of course. So if I enable it, okay, of course. And I disable the envelope here. So if I click up here on the key, not much. And the very bottom of the key. Yeah, again, that, env that envelope on the pitch, which is based on the velocity here, okay? And that was working even with the envelope dial here set to zero, uh, but of course you need to have the switch on pitch envelope set to one. Okay, let's disable that for now. Now let's go to operator B, okay? It would be exactly uh, the same in terms of parameter because it is of type uh, uh, FM. Let's go to the metrics. Let's double click here to remove the output from operator A and let's increase the output of operator B. So you hear operator B. Now, if you want to act on modulated frequency of the operator B, you just need to act on this dial. And of course, you can apply some modulation like so. Now, why not? Let's use the modulation, the LFO one again. And let's change the waveform here, something like that. Change the range here to mid. Increase the level. This is where it becomes interesting in terms of the parameter that you set. So if you go back to parameter A and you were changing the pitch in terms of your course dial here, you can create interesting effect as you're modulating operator B. Can make it more interesting, of course, adding some reverb and also some color effect. where also becomes important the output here from operator A, which is going into operator B, so you can decrease that output. As well, you can increase or decrease the input of operator B um, to take uh, more or less of the modulation on operator B from operator A. you can apply some feedback for example both on operator a operator b so you can do lots of things let's listen to what happens for example if i decrease here the pitch on operator b Okay, let's uh, 
we set the up and let's lower now the pitch of operator A. You can still act on the band, on the wave, or you can change waveform, or you can for both operator really. So it becomes really, really, really interesting. So let's do something like this. Another modulation here from LFO2. <laughs> Sounds and uh, is really really great this synth for sound design. Okay, I'm going to stop here because I covered a lot in terms of how to use the FM operator. I hope you found the tutorial useful, and as always, see you next time. Bye.